You are now plugged in to Real Talk Media. I do a little bit of history and backtracking in this video and go a little bit more in depth. But if you're trying to get right to the point, go to around 320, 325, maybe even 330. Let's get it. Damn, son. Where'd you find that? What's going on, YouTube? This should be Real Talk. You're now tuned in to Real Talk Media. Got something different to talk about today, boy. Okay, so all up and down my timeline, all of my DMs, my text messages, everybody talking about, man, Takashi snitching, Takashi snitching, man, they just broke the story, man, you gotta talk about this one, and I'm like, hold on, wait a minute, so I sat back all day and let motherfuckers run wild who don't know too much about the law, let them get their little stories out, now it's my time, I will say this, I'm gonna give y'all 100% the facts, and then I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of street history, some common sense, because I know all y'all ain't hood niggas, I know I got a lot of new subscribers and new people that's tuning in that may not know this, so this message is about to be for y'all, and it's not to my normal real talk mafia people, because y'all already seen it, y'all been around for a minute and whatnot. But yes, I am a felon. I've been to prison for felonious assault and ag robbery. With that being said, y'all know I done posted my paperwork. I done posted my pre-sentence investigation, motion to discovery, my jail pitch. I done posted all different types of stuff. And I'm not bragging or trying to make it seem like it was cool or none of that. Because actually going to prison was one of the dumbest things I ever had to do in my life. For real, for real. With that being said, though, it also leads to that authenticity. Because like I said, I was the one that got snitched on. I'm the one that been to prison. And a lot of these other bloggers, they just be speaking off of stuff from their homeboy perspective or from the perspective perspective of a person that may have lived in the hood but ain't from the hood if y'all know what i mean anyway why they trying to say takashi out here snitching on cool to be in them yeah i said it okay i ain't said it but tmz is reporting that with that being said though yo we about to do a flashback real quick y'all remember when takashi and them first got locked up right and they were saying that takashi was uh in general population now how many of y'all know somebody that was locked up or is locked up or whatever other than calling home and checking on their family and their kids and checking on their bond or their lawyer or telling you about their case, what's one of the main things motherfuckers always do? It seems to happen quite a bit. They tell you who they in there with, right? Yeah, man, I'm in here with that nigga Sporty Loke from the north side. Oh, yeah, I'm in here. So don't you think somebody would have called home and been like, yo, man, I'm in here with that nigga Takashi. That nigga really in Gen Pop. Ain't nobody called home and said that. Ain't nobody gave no interview. Ain't nobody been home. Ain't nobody said nothing about them being in Gen Pop. True enough, niggas got bigger things to worry about. They trying to come home or they on their way home or they on their way to the joint. So it's bigger things to worry about than that nigga Takashi right there. But nigga, I was locked up. One of the things niggas talk about when they call home, man, oh yeah, I'm in here with such and such from over here, such and such from over there. And if somebody with some type of high celebrity status or a real big case get locked up or a lot of money, they not necessarily going to put you in gen pop. You might be on the block or you might be in the unit, but you're going to be segregated. You're going to be off to yourself because if anything was to happen to you, that jail and or whoever put you in there with them people are liable for that. I mean, hey, it is what it is. It's the truth. Sometimes there are exceptions to the rule, but you got to look at it from this aspect. He's in there for a case that's involving known or allegedly known gang members who've been doing all different types of stuff. They're saying that these are the same individuals who allegedly and kidnapped him. They allegedly had a hit on him. So do you think they really gonna put that nigga in gin pop? Well, yeah, they do it to scare him. And if you think that nigga, you ain't never been locked up before. Like I said, there are exceptions to the rule like Beanie Siegel. Beanie Siegel was in gin pop. Beanie Siegel ain't have all this shit over his head. Niggas wasn't trying to kill him like this either though. Not long later, remember how I did a story about them moving Takashi to the, uh, what I call it, the snitch prison or the snitch jail? I know y'all gonna be like, well, prison and jail? Motherfucker, you know what I'm talking about. Quit playing with me. Anyway, y'all know he had requested to be moved to a facility that did not have a lot of bloods and crips, a gang activity, a little bit more peaceful, so forth and so on, and he got his wish. They moved him to a facility that's known to house and or keep people who cooperate, snitch, uh, help, whatever words y'all might want to use, that nigga man, whatever. I ain't gonna say he was snitching in, but he definitely got moved to a place that houses snitches. And y'all know the internet be going crazy. Everybody talking about Takashi going snitch, Takashi snitched there. Matter of fact, Alshon Martin was just accusing Shadi of snitching the other day. Matter of fact, hold up, fuck that. Alshon, you said you got proof Shadi was snitching and cooperating, right? You said you was gonna post that shit on your live a few days ago. Nigga, it's been how many days? You on a countdown, nigga. We need to see that paperwork or we on your head, boy. Anyway, in my head, I even feel like 6ix9ine gonna snitch or already in a snitch, but I can't prove it, and y'all know I ain't gonna call that nigga no snitch without no proof. However, we about to get to that in a minute. Y'all know this is a superseding indictment, which means they can add people at any time, which is how Roe Murder got added to it. And now that leads us to what just happened recently. Y'all remember that video that came out a while ago where it looks like or it seems like to some people that Takashi 6 9 may or may not be putting a hit on Chief Keith and Tato? Okay. And y'all remember when Chief Keith got shot at at the W Hotel, but they missed him and hit like the sign or something dumb? Well, they trying to say that Takashi had a meeting with the investigators or the detectives or whatever. Right after that, Kuda B got indicted. Yeah, I said Kuda B. 
Man, the skinny ass dancing nigga to be in all the Takashi 69 videos dancing and shit doing the. Man, y'all know who I'm talking about. Anyway, they trying to say that Takashi paid cool to be $10,000 to go shoot Chief Keith. So, I mean, hey, it is what it is. So, right after his meeting with investigators, allegedly, he get indicted. And not only him, two more individuals got indicted. And TMZ is also reporting that they got word that Takashi snitching. I mean, y'all know TMZ have been wrong sometimes, but they also have been right a lot of times. And y'all know they got a lot of inside sources. So, use your own judgment with that one. But I'm going to continue to read. It says McKenzie was allegedly paid $10,000 to shoot Chief Keith, according to our law enforcement sources. Remember, he had a beef with Keith leading up to the shooting. As we first reported, two men, including a known Takashi associate, tracked down Keith in NYC and opened fire but missed. We're told authorities have not apprehended McKenzie. Ellison is already in custody for allegedly kidnapping and assaulting Takashi, and Butler was busted by the ATF on Wednesday. Ellison and Butler are expected to appear in court later this afternoon. The U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York declined to comment on Takashi's cooperation. We've reached out to Takashi's lawyer and so far, no word back. So, hey, it is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. As y'all can see, they said that they have not heard from the DA's office. They have not heard from Takashi's lawyer if he is cooperating or not. However, they do have an inside source that says he is. Okay. Now I'm done with all that. Now let's get to what I think, my opinion. There is no right or wrong answer. We can agree to disagree. I'm going to talk some street shit, some common sense stuff. And like I said, y'all knew who he was hanging with. Y'all know them some real blood, some real street people. And y'all know his actual demeanor. Which one of them people do y'all think is more likely to snitch first? Okay. Now, with that being said, y'all seen how everybody was getting locked up. Now, true enough, they was watching the nine trays before he came around. But once he came around and started shining the light on stuff... Then, OK, boom. Then y'all remember when they said somebody that had recorded the robbery from across the street of the This Is 50 Studios and they sent that to a person who posted it online and no one knew who that person was? Well, TMZ actually posted the screenshot that the police had and the screenshot that they had had DJ Academics logo going right across the screen. Said, I am Academics. OK, matter of fact, if I can find that bitch again, I'll post it in this video. It is what it is. By now, y'all should know me way better than that. I ain't gonna post just a screenshot. I'm gonna post the whole video. Let's go. Now, with that being said, though, um, y'all also remember when academics posted that video and TMZ posted that video of what looked like him ordering the hit on Chief Keith. And y'all also know how many times Takashi was seen recording and doing other little dumb stuff. Now, who goes to jail and asks to be transferred to another prison and or jail? My fault. Let me use the right word. But who goes to one and asks to be, can y'all transfer me to one without some bloods or crips? I mean, not true enough. A lot of people may feel better and safer in one. But when you asking for stuff like that, yeah, OK, we got you. What you going to do for us? I mean, wait, hey, they got a segregation part in the one he was in. They could have kept him safe and away from everybody where he was at. Why would they have to move him? I mean, OK, let's just say he still didn't tell. But when he did get moved, it seemed like a couple more people got locked up. Now, true enough, they have been watching them for a while, so we're going to let that pass. But now they're trying to say that as soon as he had a meeting with the investigators, niggas start getting indicted, and they're trying to say that he told. So, I mean, hey, I'm not saying he told. TMZ said they talking to niggas on the inside, and they, that motherfucker said he told. So, hey, psh, it is what, what do y'all think about all this, though? My personal opinion, he going to tell. He definitely going to say something or he going to take a plea bargain. And then I think part of his plea bargain they give him is we'll give you this if you give us that. I think that is the deal that they want to make, period. We'll give you this if you give us that. Ain't no, OK, well, you just take these charges and go on, on, on. Nah, they watching these niggas for too long and you too close to the source. You can tell something, bro. I mean, hey, or you can get a lot of time for a dumbass crime. I mean, you can get wrapped right on in with everything else that they've been watching them for if everybody don't beat the case. And I also think, matter of fact, I'm going to keep that part separate. That's for a whole nother video. We're going to stick to this new indictment and we're going to stick to them saying Takashi was snitching. Bro, I think he did it. 
I think he's snitching. I think he been said something a while ago. I think the nigga tired of being locked up. The nigga scared. And like I said, psh, I think, I mean, hey, but at the end of the day, I'm not personally going to call him a snitch as far as for making videos saying that, yo, he definitely snitching until I know for sure. I'm not going to put that cable on him, even though I don't like his face. I don't like his music. I don't like the fucking tattoos on him. I don't like his hair color. I don't like his height. I don't like, man, look, hey, I don't like that motherfucker, period, but I'm still not going to call him a snitch. I don't wish prison on nobody, but I do wish some ass whoopings on. Oh, look, wait. Did I say ass whoop? Man, I don't know what an ass whooping is, but I wish that and the ass whooping on him. No, he do need his ass whooped. But that being said, drop a comment down below and let me know what y'all think about this. I'm on Twitter at Real Talk Blogs. I'm on Instagram at Real Talk Blogger. <laughs> Yo, this shit crazy. I'm out. All it takes is the beat, then I start snapping. Back to rapping. Y'all been acting like it's about fashion. Rocking them skinny jeans and them purses. Niggas be dressing like faggots. Doing gay ass dances, but ain't saying shit when they rhyme. But if the beat's something they can dance to, then they